Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is largest prime factor and it is a medium level problem. So I know that this video is a little bit late. Actually I was busy in the morning with some important work. So that is why I couldn't upload it early in the morning. Anyways, this problem says that we have been given a number n and our task is to find the largest prime factor of that number. And uh, if you look at the space complexity and the time complexity, the time complexity is coming out to be square root of n and the space complexity is O of n. If we have root n time, we can just try finding out all the prime factors and take the largest among them. Right? This can be a very straightforward approach of solving this problem. Now the question is how do we find prime factors in root of n time? Right? So this is a very standard problem of prime factorization and let us see how we can solve it. So let's say you have any number n and I am going to tell you a mathematical statement. This will be very helpful to you even in many problems. So the statement says that, let me just type it. So it says that for any number n, there exists at least one prime factor of n till square root of n. Right. So this statement is true for any number until and unless it, the number is itself prime. So for example, if I take 5, the square root of 5 will be 2 point something. Right. And there will be no prime factor of 5 up to 2. Right. So for prime factors, so for, for so for numbers which are itself primes, this might not work. But for any other general number, this will always work. If this statement is true, we can utilize this statement to our benefit. So this statement can actually be used in multiple different ways, right? Let me just explain you its applications one by one. So the first application can be to find out whether a number is prime or not, right? Whether, whether n is prime or not. And the second one is obviously prime factorization. So let us say, let us say that we have a number n that is equals to 2 raised to the power a, 3 raised to the power b, 5 raised to the power c, 7 raised to the power d and so on. So you see I am only taking prime numbers right and raising it to the power something. So every number, every number n can be formed with the help of these numbers or these sequences of numbers where each prime number let us say p1 is raised to the power some x then p2 is raised to the power y and p3 is raised to the power z. Right. Every number can be represented in this particular form. Now we know this particular fact and we also know that there will exist at least one prime factor of n till square root of n. So if I have the original number n with me, what I can try to do is I can go till square root of n. Right. And let's say I found its first prime factor p1. Right. So let's say I found p1. So now what I can do is I can try to remove this p1 completely from n. Right. So what I'll do by y n mod p1 is equal to is equal to 0. That means y n is divisible by p1. I will divide n by p1. Why am I doing this? I'm trying to remove all the factors of p1 or the first prime number from n. And how will this help us? Now you will see that the new n that we get will be equal to p2 is the power y, p3 is the power z, and so on. Right. Now for this new number, I can again go till square root of n and I can find its first prime factor, right? So let's say its first prime factor was p2. Now I can do the exact same thing with p2 as well. I can divide by, by n mod p2 is equal to is equal to 0. That means while n is divisible by p2, I will divide n by p2, right? You see? I'm not doing anything. I'm just finding the first prime factor of the current number and removing that prime factor from the whole number. Now for the remaining prime factors, I can do the same thing again and again to find all the prime factors of the number, right? This is exactly what we call prime factorization. First of all, we found a prime factor P1, then we found a prime factor P2, and then we can find a prime factor P3. So this way, we only have to go up to square root of n each time, right? And ultimately, the overall time complexity will be square root of n for this particular method. So you see, this single property helped us to find two things. 
first of all you can easily check whether number n is prime or not because if it is not prime then at least one of its factor will exist till square root of n and if it is prime then that particular prime factor will not exist for that number for example as we have seen in the case of 5 so this statement is true for any non prime number or a composite number right now if we try to do prime factorization of any number we know that every number n can be represented as a multiple of several prime numbers raised to their respective powers right so i wrote it in this form but you can also write it in a more general form like this p1 raised to power x p2 raised to power y p3 raised to power z and so on right now what i try to do was if this is equals to n i can try to find the first prime factor of this number p1 by only going to square root of n now now once i find this p1 i try to remove all the factors of p1 from this number n once i remove all the factors of p1 then only p2 p3 and so on will be remaining again i can apply the same logic to remove p2 as well then p3 then p4 and so on right at the end what will happen is either my n will be equal to 1 or my n will be equal to some prime number so this part is very obvious that if i remove all the prime factors then only one will be remaining but how can this case be possible so this can be the case where only one prime factor is remaining and remember this statement that we talked about only works for non prime numbers so if you have a prime number remaining let's say equals to 5 then in that particular case we will not be able to find another prime factor till square root of n right and if this single prime factor is remaining this can also be one of our possible answers so if this is one of the possible answers if at the end n is greater than 1 that means it is one of our possible answers and i can update my answer as max of answer comma n right because this can also be one of my possible answers so this was all about this particular problem and this property is very 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 important that we have just discussed in this particular video and with the help of this you can solve several other problems as well we have just discussed two simple applications of this particular property and now let us have a look at the code and you'll be able to understand it in a much better way so you see here what i've done is i've initialized my answer variable and I'm starting my for loop from 2 and I'm just going till less than root n, right? So basically, if I'm going i into i is less than equals to n. So if you're not able to understand this part, let me just write it more clearly. So if I am writing it like this, right? If this is my statement, I can also write it like this. So this is exactly what I did there. The only reason to do this was to avoid floating point calculations, right? If I do this, if I calculate the root, square root of n, it will be in double or float. Right, but I don't want this. If I write the equation in this format, instead of writing in the above format, then all of my values will be in integers. Right, this is the only reason why we write it like this. And you will see, I'm going till less than equal to root n, and I'm just doing i plus plus. Now, whenever I find a prime factor of n, then I update my answer as i, and I just remove that prime factor of n. Why n mod i is equal to equal to zero? I'm just dividing n by i. Right. So why can I directly update the statement? Because I will always be increasing, right? You could have also written answer is equal to max of answer comma i. But since i is always increasing, I can just directly update answer as i. Now at the end, if n is greater than 1, that means there is only one prime number remaining in n, right? And that can also be one of our possible answers. So I can just update my answer as max of answer comma n and then just return my answer value. So this was the whole solution. Let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works. So you see, it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and you able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.